My name is uh, Julio Cesar Cedillo, and that's my shorter name. What? Uh, it's actually longer than that. Uh, I'm from Mexico. I was born in Mexico. I, I came here to the U.S. when I was four years old. I speak two languages, and uh, I'm an actor. I'm a professional actor, and I get to use those two languages. And um, I live in Fort Worth. Uh, and I've been an actor for over 20 years. And I started out in theater, but I also do movies and TV shows and so on. So what we're going to do is we're going to show you this uh, some clips from different things that I've been in. Maybe things you have seen, maybe things you should not have seen. Uh, no, it's all fine. You're going to be fine. But when we're done, uh, I can talk a little bit about what I what I did. If you have questions, just raise your hand, and I'll pick. The hands, and then we'll talk. I mean, this is not a, a formal, super formal thing. For me. I think that the more you get out of it, the better I'm going to feel. Because that's my job today. Okay, guys. Yeah, everybody good. Hey, this is Henry. Leave a message. Henry, we need to talk.
That's a, that's a nice speech. But what do we say to the family that tried him? Yeah, that's, that's, that's nice. Um, and we're just supposed to forgive you? No more questions. The defense rests. I changed my mind. We are recessed for the day. I will hear closing arguments. First, Your Honor, the defense requests that we be permitted to call one more witness. The defendant's husband, Philip Neely. Objection. You just rested. Sustain, Your Honor. We Mr. Need. Neely says one word. I have grounds for an appeal. Ms. Caswell, the ADA is right. The testimony has concluded. Mr. Neely cannot take the stand. I will hear closing arguments first thing tomorrow.
How'd you get there? How did you get out there? You don't want to tell me. <coughs> It's time for you to let people alone as a real show. He's off the tunnel. Sink up for nobody. souvenir pictures when we drove over to Biloxi last year. Is that her or not? Did baby feet kill this girl? <laughs> Come on, Lieutenant. You know how it works. A guy like Julie don't do hits. He says something to somebody and he forgets it. If it's a special kind of job, maybe somebody calls up a geek. Did baby feet make that call? Start a photo album with that. You make up your own life. Two movies I've done it where they do what they call body cast. They do, do body cast. They'll, they'll, for instance, they'll, you, you know when you go to, um, who, who here has, has broken their arm? Like, okay. like two times maybe. Well, you're not lucky, but you kind of had a movie thing going on. Because they actually, when they put a cast on you, it's the same thing in the movies. They do, they do a cast of your arm or your head. And then what they do is um, they have to cut it with a trill, split it open, and then they fill it with rubber. And that makes your face, right? And so then they put makeup on it, and then that's how they make you look, you know, make you look real. Uh, I did that for the three burials, because there was a burial scene where they have to bury my body, and they were throwing dirt on my face. Well, they can't throw dirt, you know, dirt on my face, that would be cruel. So they used a replica of my face, and that's what they did. But when they pour that stuff on you, there was a straw that they put in my mouth so I could breathe while that was drying and setting, setting up. Uh, uh, the character in Walking Dead was Lieutenant Wells. Um, Lieutenant Wells. Uh, what was my favorite movie that I worked on? I, I gotta say, I think Cowboys and Aliens was my favorite. Yes. 
Just because, well, here's the thing. Did you get, uh, who saw Cowboys and Aliens? And you're all not 13, right? <laughs> yeah, okay. Who saw Pulp Fiction? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> all right, so here's the thing. Uh, that movie, the reason I liked it was because it was all make-believe. You know, it was, it was Cowboys, because I love being in Cowboy movies. But it was also sci-fi because of the aliens. Now, you saw the aliens, right? I mean, they came out running. Well, in real life, we didn't have those aliens. We had seven foot tall, eight foot tall uh, ex-basketball players dressed in green from head to toe. So these were, the, these were the guys we were supposed to be afraid of. It's real hard to be afraid of a tall guy wearing green leotards. It's not, not that scary, okay? Uh, you, can you stand up and sound a little? Yeah, stand up, stand up. Stand up and and then don't be shy. Use your voice. In The Walking Dead, do you um, do you work with the characters Carl, Rick, and Daryl? Uh, I no. In that episode, that was the first episode where you see the governor. That's the first time you see the governor, and you get to see uh, he's in charge of that little town that he's in. And uh, so all my scenes were only well, you, what you saw is what I was in, was with the governor. But I did see all the, all the actors were there. All of them were there. We had to have lunch. In fact, that day, just so you know, does anybody know where they shoot Walking Dead? No. 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 Where do they shoot Walking Dead? Do they shoot it right here? Are they shooting Grand Prairie? Yeah. They should, right? Because <laughs> there's a lot of zombies around here, right? And they shoot it in Arizona, right? No, The Walking Dead, just so you know, it was shot, it, they shoot in Atlanta, Georgia. It's actually in a suburb called Peachtree City. And when, when we broke for lunch, you know, because you got to eat when you're on set, right? Yeah. They had three vans going by, and I was, I was getting out of, out of makeup to go, go to lunch, right? And it was pouring raining. And so I get in the last van, not knowing that I got in the extras van, and all the extras were zombies. So I, I had to get past a couple of people with no arms. Somebody was missing a jaw. I was sitting in the back. And, when the, and, and somebody asked me earlier about, uh, about the, uh, I think it was you, about the uh, zombies. What they do, even though you have all the main characters, what's really cool and kind of scary and gross are the zombies, right? Well, the zombies, just so you know, those are, those are people that answer an ad in the newspaper. And the, and the production company, what they do is they say, okay, if you weigh 100 pounds and you're, you know, you're almost six feet tall, we need you. Why? Because you're super thin. And they put these prosthetics, they put this rubber stuff on you and they put makeup on it to look like, you know, you're missing body parts. And so all the people that are playing zombies typically tend to be really, really thin people. Or they'll get people who are very heavy and they do all sorts of things. But for the most part, most of the people that looks like they're missing a limb, it's, it's people who've answered an ad. Or they'll, they'll, they'll actually hire uh, people who are missing limbs. They actually will hire them. Uh, it's much, e much cheaper to put makeup on someone who's missing a limb than digitally removing that arm on the show. So they hire tons of people. Um, all right, another question here. Uh, yes. Yeah. How do I remember my script? That's a really, really good question, especially for those of you here who are in a fine arts school. Um, it's really hard. Uh, at first, you know, I used to think, uh, I mean, I love acting, so I'm ready to jump in and get to the work. But I can't get to the work until I memorize stuff, right? And so how do you memorize? Well, repeat, 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 repeat. You can be repetitive when you're learning, but that's not really a good way to learn your script. The way to learn a script is to break it down. And when you break it down, you have to ask yourself, what am I saying here? And how, how, how is it that what I'm saying leads to something else? When you have to do a monologue, you, you really have to depend on yourself to tell the story. And so each thing motivates another thing that you say, right? But when you're in a scene, you can't be thinking, OK, what am I going to say next? Because you actually have to be listening to your partner. They're acting your partner, right? So what they say motivates the next line. So that makes it easier. But it's more about knowing what you, what you want to say, right? That helps memorize, not just trying to repeat, repeat, repeat. Another question in the back. Is it fun to act? 
It is awesome. It is awesome. I'm still afraid. Like right now, um, I don't want to. I don't. I really don't know what I'm going to do when I grow up. To be honest. You are growing up. I really don't know what I'm going to do. Do you think I'm growing up? Yes. No, you have to think about it. You guys are too honest. Uh, let me get on this side. Uh, yes, sir, back there. What kind of stuff do you do? What kind of stuff do I do? Yeah. Were you asleep? <laughs> I'm kidding. What kind of stuff do I do? What do you mean, like uh, outside of work? Like, yeah. Oh, so when I'm not working, what is it that I do? Yeah. Okay. Uh, part, of, part of what you do when you're an actor and you're not working is you're working to get work. So what does that mean? That means I'm auditioning. Who knows what the word audition means? Everybody knows, right? You have to keep trying out for the parts, right? You have to keep trying out for what you want. So when I'm not working, I'm looking for jobs by auditioning, and that means I have to meet directors, uh, casting directors. So that's what I do. Okay, yes, ma'am. Um, what, um, what was the first actor that you met? The first actor that I met was a very famous actor back when I was. Uh, 20 years old, his name was George C. Scott, and I did a movie with him, a movie of the week, back in the day when they were called movies of the week. Now, before I keep picking someone, the other thing I wanted you to notice is that um, I got to speak a lot of Spanish and a lot of stuff that I do, right? Yeah. Right? Who, who here speaks uh, Spanish? Okay, great. That's a lot of people. Yeah. Who, who here speaks, okay, who, who here speaks uh, French? Okay. You speak French? Who speaks Pig Latin? Alright, so here's the thing, guys. Here, here's the thing, alright? Because, because I came from Mexico, right? When I moved here from Mexico, the most important thing for my family was that I speak English well. But that didn't mean lose my Spanish, and that didn't mean speak Spanish badly. It meant I needed to make sure that I spoke two lang languages correctly. It's not easy, but it's important if you do speak another language to, to, to keep, your, keep the cultural aspect of that for yourself. Because later on in life, and it doesn't have to be about acting, uh, you could be anything, but if you speak another language, it's much more helpful. And so those of you who only speak one, one if you speak English, don't worry about it, speak English well. I mean, that's, it's not about, you know, you're being competitive. But if you can't speak another language, that's going to help you down the road. And for me, uh, as you can see, it's helped me tremendously in my career. Uh, and like I said, I, when I'm tired, actually, when I'm tired, at the end of the day, sometimes my accent comes back. Sometimes I, I'll, I'll go, did I just say that? Uh, if I'm tired, I will say, um, I'll switch the, uh, instead of saying oranges, I'll say, uh, oranges. <laughs> oranges. Hey, pass me an orange. Where did that come from? Right? Uh, pull in the chair. Oh, it's chair. Sorry. Uh, you see what I mean? So I have to. You don't lose it, but you learn how to. You learn how to speak, right? Okay. So I want to make sure I need that. Last question, Ella. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I am. Okay. What was it like to be in all those different scenes? What was it? What was it like to be in all those different scenes? Okay. Um, you know, now that I look at it, like right now when, when uh, Mr. Mendez told me, hey, come talk to the kids, uh, I thought, well, what am I going to do? I've done so many things. Uh, i got to pull something together to show the kids, show you guys. And as I was standing over there, I realized, golly, I have done a lot of stuff. I'm kind of surprised. I mean, I'm surprised by the sense that I don't, I do the work, I get the work done, and then I go home. I don't think about it. I, it's not like I sit there and brag or feel like, oh, how cool. It's actually a job. It's no, like my job, honestly, as cool as it may seem to you, there are a lot of great jobs out there. You don't have to be an actor. I mean, there's, I mean believe me, yeah, there's a lot of amazing jobs out there. Police officers, paramedics, accountants. Uh, I mean, whatever. Whatever you do in your life, make that the coolest thing. Make that, be the best at that. That's the most important thing. So as I sat there, I looked at that and I thought, wow, I, I, I've been able to pay the bills doing that crazy stuff. So that makes me feel good. 
right? That I'm a productive member of society. And that's, that's really what you strive for. Uh, well, I guess that's all the time we got, guys. I'm, I'm sorry I kind of sucked up most of the time. What do we, what do we, uh, tell Mr. Thank Steele. you. Thank you. Thank you. De los estudiantes que están aquí, ¿cuáles hablan español? Son varios, ¿no? Y en la casa de ustedes donde viven, ¿hablan puro español o es una mezcla entre el inglés y el español? Es una mezcla. Es una mezcla. Hola. ¿Quién dice mezcla? Mezcla. Es una mezcla. You know what mezcla means? It's a mix. What I just said is, you're speaking. You're right, you're speaking English and Spanish at home, so it's, it's una mezcla. But I, you get embarrassed? Don't get embarrassed. All right, guys, that was a good question, though. That was a good question, what he asked me. Because when you, when you, it's not just about acting. So when you go, and, it's, and it starts here, and when you're, when you're at home, keep the Spanish going, but speak it well. On the other hand, keep the English going and speak that well. And regardless of the school and what you're doing here, speaking more than one language will always help you down the line. So it doesn't have to be Spanish. You can learn how to speak French, Italian, right? I mean, I can stand here and go, Siamo diversi ma tutti uguali basiano di un paio d'anni stimoli eccezionali. And that's like, God, that's really good Italian, but I just made that up. <laughs> do I, that's another really good question. Do I do my own stunts? Uh, uh, no. No, because it's dangerous. Now, there are some stunts that I can do that are not difficult. One of them is um, when you're in a scene and you got to fake punch somebody. Okay, if, if someone's standing here and I I swing at him, you'll be able to tell that I missed them, right? Right? But if the person's right here and I swing at him, like here, you come here. I'll show you. We're gonna do the stunt. Okay, we're gonna do the stunt. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. And don't film this because then we'll be in trouble. No, okay. So if you stand right here, okay, so if I, okay, so when I swing, you, you go like that, okay? So if I go, oh, I went the wrong way. <laughs> See, now it's a comedy. So I want to hit you, you go that way, okay? But look, look at the distance, right? Look at the distance, ready? You can tell I, I missed, right? I missed! But if I do this, change the angle, I'm not going to hit your cousin. I swear. So if the camera's there, because we're cheating the angle now, I know you guys can't see, but we'll do it in a minute. Ready? You're going to turn the same way. Ready? Ready? Oh, it looks like you hit him. No. Looks like you hit him, right? But then they add, thank you, sir. Thank you. Applause. Applause. <laughs> so the thing is, you have, to, you have to sell that. But some of the stunts that I wouldn't do is like falling off a horse, you know what I mean? I mean, real serious stunts, I don't do those. Because then, if I get hurt, then I can't finish my role in the movie, right? So they always have what they call, your, you have your stand-in, people who stand in for you, and then you have your stunt doubles, who are supposed to double you when you do a big, you know, big stunt. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming out here and sharing your knowledge and experience with us. Thank you very much, I appreciate that. On behalf of the Arts Academy,